Okay, uh, hello everybody. I am um, I am Marco Martin, and uh, um, I've been a contributor of uh, KDE uh, since pretty much a decade. Um, have I been almost always working mostly on plasma? So that's that's exactly what I will talk about uh, today. Uh, nowadays I'm working for for Blue Systems, and I am uh, I am still uh, uh, dedicating a lot of my time, both free and work work, uh, on uh, improving uh, uh, the plasma experience. Uh, so uh, this talk, uh, even if it's about plasma, will not really. Uh, be that much about uh, pretty, pretty pictures, uh, but I'll go a bit more um, in depth on uh, on the internals, how plasma used to work, how plasma works now, and how can we make it work in the future uh, as we are starting to to do some work and still gathering idea for what we can what we can and want to do for kf6 and plasma 6 um, so how plasma began plasma began uh, uh, in the early days of uh, KD3 to the KD4 transition in those very interesting times. So uh, the first public release was with KD4.0. That's how it used to look. Uh, it changed a lot, luckily also, um, since then on the surface, but many of the internal concepts are uh, uh, still pretty similar and very valid today. Um, so uh, this first part will be kind of a repetition uh, with uh, the training by uh, caving on Friday, uh, but we'll, uh, we'll uh, refresh it a bit and then go on what we can do for the future. So in the early uh, KD4 times, uh, Plasma was all built around a framework from uh, Qt, which was called, uh, was called the Q Graphics View. It was an early attempt of uh, going over the limitations of um, of uh, uh, the Q widgets API, uh, it wasn't completely successful uh, because it was still very much software rendering based and Q Painter based. Uh, but for sure, uh, it did teach many lessons. Um, it's uh, we in Plasma 5, we ported it uh, almost completely out of, of uh, Q Graphics View. There are still some uh, external applications that still do some use of it, uh, like the Dolphin Icon View. Um, so uh, how, how you used to work, there was a um, a central class called the Corona that I guarantee back in the in those times Corona was a completely innocent name uh, even though nowadays, nowadays is, it, it probably really needs a new name for obvious reasons uh, it was uh, uh, the reason was um, with the, the Corona of the Sun which is where the plasma lives uh, that was a subclass of uh, uh, a Q graphic scene. So the Corona 
was what contained every single graphical element that you seen in uh, um, in in the the plasma desktop and plasma panels uh, as as the first level uh, this corona contained objects called the containments that could have as many as 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 we wanted uh, they could be desktop uh, containment so your desktop wallpaper with uh, icons on desktop widgets and whatnot um, one for each screen and one for each activity uh, it, and it also contained uh, the several panels all of them were uh, were containments a containment was a sub a subclass uh, when well, still is a subclass of uh, uh, applet which at those time it was a subclass of q graphics widgets so uh, applet was both the center of the logic of the plasmoid and of the uh, graphical representation um, a uh, containment, as the name suggests, it um, it could uh, instantiate inside of it, inside of it, many many applets. So it could it, it could contain uh, the desktop could contain many widgets, and the panel could could contain many components as well. Your your start menu, uh, the task uh, the task manager, the system tray, and whatnot. Uh, a plasmoid usually was a C++ plugin which extended so subclasses either applet or containment. Uh, later we built uh, several bindings of different languages. We had JavaScript that way before QML what it was still not a thing so it was JavaScript but very uh, imperative based and we had Python and Ruby and just in the last in the last years of KD4, we introduced the QML binding that later in Plasma 5, it grown up and it eaten, eaten up everything else because uh, we were pretty fed up to, 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 um, to be sincere with the uh, uh, QGraphic scene. Uh, so, uh, uh, QML was also QGraphic scene based in Qt4. In Qt5, it introduced its uh, its new rendering engine, uh, the QML scene graph, and we wanted uh, we wanted to go there uh, also because with uh, with this completely software based rendering, th there were significant performance reasons. Uh, <laughs> limitations like resizing a very big applet sometimes it went down to four or five frames per second which was really not accept uh, acceptable so we we very enthusiastically uh, jumped on the QML bandwagon on uh, or as a nice uh, side effect uh, the triad of uh, the the uh, main uh, classes in plasma became uh, migrated from being also graphics objects to being pure Q objects so pure uh, purely logic without uh, a particular representation attached uh, which is nice as a downside we lost pretty much all the bindings that were not QML uh, but uh, but we um, we still had all the the, the, the complete uh, language bind binding infrastructure uh, that we had even if even if it can have one and only one and also also those bindings were C++ plugins so uh, in Plasma 5, we have exactly one plugin for, for, for bindings, 
uh, that is the QML one, which is mandatory to use, so it doesn't really make much sense that it's a, that it's a plugin. So this thing and this this component is something is something that we probably can do without, and we can simplify. Uh, so um, are we happy? in uh, plasma framework as is now uh, we all know that it's it's way too big it has way too many dependencies and it offers function some functionalities that are still needed some functionalities that are that are uh, pretty okay uh, some functionality that are not really needed anymore uh, the kind of different uh, paradigm that that developed of, over time by by uh, development QML based UI uh, made some of some of that framework redundant uh, so the part uh, of of layout loading with corona contaminated applet is fine there are some important things to change there but it's more or less good to go i think um well the, the the big the big the big thing is uh uh containment how it manages screen ownership it does have problem with multi-screen this will need will need a bit more thinking about uh some pieces can be uh i think in kf6 they really should become their their own framework uh, one example is uh, all the svg infrastructure um, so to do basically exactly like uh, uh, we did um, back in the day uh, with the k package which was uh, uh, used to be uh, a part of plasma framework uh, SVG uh, is based on top of Qt SVG, so it is uh, still kind of limited to tiny SVG, but it's for for what it has to do, it's it's fine. Um, a, a library that loads basic shapes is is something that it that it that it's always okay, uh, but on top of uh, Qt SVG, it adds pretty nice features uh, one of it is uh, this caching so uh, by by profiling things um, we discover that that the, the the biggest part of startup time while loading SVG um, is uh, the actual instantiation and parsing of the SVG file clearly uh, so it does um, it it does uh, um, on disk caching of the rendered pix maps, which can improve startup time of almost an order of magnitude um, in in the instantiation time of that particular thing. Um, also, also another another thing that it's pretty nice in the uh, plasma svg support is a is a basic style sheet support uh, so uh, we can recolor some elements in the svg uh, according to uh, the system colors uh, so it's uh, it's uh, very convenient for instance if you have a monochrome icon team uh, like uh, most of the actions in the in the breeze icon team are um, you can recolor them for different color scheme without having to have a duplicate team just for for uh, different color schemes uh, at least one for for uh, uh, light schemes and one for dark schemes uh, you can you can just recolor the same stuff uh, and also you can do uh, pieces of the UI um, 
uh, pieces of the UI uh, in SVG uh, with those pieces that follow button colors and whatnot. Uh, we also have Frame SVG, which is uh, um, also pretty useful. Is the is the classical nine patches image uh, used to do a style decorated render rectangles that you can scale without the corners um, uh, being horribly deformed. Uh, on the on the uh, QML bindings, it has also some uh, basic support for hardware acceleration, so resizing them is very fast. Uh, but we still all, uh, still have a complete QPainter API, so it could be, it could be uh, well used uh, both in uh, QWidget space API, um, applications and um, QML applications, if at least if we if we get it on a uh, low tier enough, the only uh, concern for the tier is the use of KPX map cache that rises this a bit, but that shouldn't be bad. Another big part in uh, Plasma framework is data engines. Data engines uh, is is one of the things that were that were a really good idea at the time. Um, they are a mechanism for having a, a plugin based logic based upon uh, uh, data extraction and and uh, write operation with a, with a job api uh, they were thought uh, mostly for the early uh, imperative JavaScript bindings, uh, so also to give them, to, to, to give those JavaScript bindings a kind of web feeling based API. At some point we also had support for remote data engines, so you could have uh, a plasmoid running on a machine uh, fetching data uh, from a different machine. It was it was a cool idea, but never really executed to the end. Yeah, an idea that, in my opinion, in other places, is still is still worth to explore. Um, also, with the help of KD Connect, I guess, but not with this API. Uh, also, also that API was really subject of made, made it too easy to to do spaghetti code implementations so most of the data engines implementation are really not pretty to look at so it's something that we will probably retire um, i already tried and did a um, a standalone data engine library which could be used in Plasma 6 just as a porting aid could uh, live uh, in workspace with the name Plasma 5 support and and uh, um, on uh, for a QML plasmoid is much easier and much more elegant to instead binding a Q object with um, with uh, properties, signals, slots, and whatnot. Just just uh, to pay attention of not doing big sinks sync operations in the in the slots, uh, as the data engines were very explicit of, of in them being very async. Um, but but in general uh, is something that teach it, it it did teach us many things but we probably not need that anymore uh, a part uh, which is uh, which is mostly okay until uh, the the step of the binding is the la the layout loading so uh, how how does it work at the moment uh, 
the whole layout for the desktop is serialized in um, a uh, configuration file, the applets, uh, applets RC configuration file, uh, the corona reads that, and from the uh, top uh, conf config group called containments, it reads all the subgroups. Each of the subgroups uh, that is uh, um, um, that is in the name of in the structure of a number. So uh, you had like uh, uh, containments like one each each group with with this structure will uh, uh, will represent a different containment. So Corona will instantiate a containment instance uh, for each one of them. Uh, doesn't matter if they are desktops or if they are panels. Uh, then each one of the containments um, restore its own config and then and then looks in its applet uh, applets um, config group. So uh, under it it will be an an applets conf config group and then numbers again. So uh, for each one of those subgroups, it will instantiate a new applet, which will have the containment as its uh, parent in the queue object sense. Uh, and then the applet will, uh, um, uh, will um, uh, restore its configuration and um, and this is the part to, to slightly modify, in my opinion. Uh, at this moment, it loads uh, the QML script engine plugin, uh, which then uh, loads the QML and creates a, an object of a class called the applet interface, which is a QQuick item and is the parent of the uh, of the actual representation that it's contained uh, in the in the actual Plasma QML, applet interface is uh, is uh, pretty much a wrapper of uh, most of the applet uh, and containment API. Uh, so it's uh, it's kind of redundant, but is the thing that again. Uh, gets registered as a context property uh, as a context property uh, in QML in the in the um, in QML root context of that uh, uh, that applet as that plasmoid object uh, which you can see it used all over the place in most uh, uh, plasmoids uh, implementations uh, you can access uh, plasmoid.form factor to see if you, you are in a panel or a desktop. You can access plasmoid.config uh, to read and write the configuration and so on. Um, uh, another uh, part which I think it's pretty good and it will just improve on that is the concept of the shell packages. Uh, those are uh, also uh, a collection of QML files distributed in a K, a K package structure. Uh, they are used to um, to customize a bit the behavior of the main windows. So, um, uh, mostly uh, the panel window, uh, the desktop window, and uh, the configuration dialogs and things like the widget explorer, the uh, activity switcher uh, and whatnot. They they were born in uh, very late in the KD4 uh, life cycle for Plasma Active uh, where we needed to have a Plasma shell much more mobile optimized and the main desktop shell had a lot of QWidget based UI for uh, for those kind of things. So. Uh, we we added the possibility of of redefine all of that in uh, in QML and uh, uh, 
nowadays is used in the plasma desktop has as its own uh, plasma mobile uh, as its own and also plasma big screen uh, which both are based on a base package called plasma nano which uh, it's more its biggest target is mostly just to be minimal um, I will later talk a bit about just a detail how I would make them slightly better um, then uh, here those are the script engines uh, the other part that I would like to eliminate so um, right now we have uh, uh, the applet script class in plasma um, in plasma framework that that then gets re-implemented by plugins um, and by C++ plugin in the only plugin that we have is uh, the QML script engine that then uh, uh, re-implements its own almost complete applet API wrapper um, we should probably eliminate them even if I would like to eventually get back the Python the Python bindings but I don't think with this API it should probably just have the possibility of shipping Python files in the packages I guess and then uh, if found executed and the Python file can do a QML register type for instance or whatever needs to be discussed um, I did a very small prototype for now um, but it, it, it's it's already pretty useful to uh, to clear our ideas at the moment is the plasma framework fork which lives in my uh, personal area on invent uh, everything that does at the moment is uh, is just loading a single view uh, with a single containment with a single applet it in uh, but it does have most of the required things in place just 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 not all the polish just not all the things to be able to manage multi-screen and whatnot that will need it to be um, to be taught uh, but with these uh, with that uh, uh, with that prototype and with that refactor that I'm uh, subject that I'm proposing uh, should be possible also to um, to to lower <coughs> lower the tier also of the the, the framework significantly uh, I still didn't fully get rid of kxml GUI use but I think that should also be possible then whether whether it, it the result will live in um, in frameworks or in workspace um, it should be much more easy to maintain anyways um, so uh, to recap uh, we will have one one f f from from the, the the current code of plasma framework having one framework which is uh, the SVG stuff uh, Plasma framework will begin will become basically uh, Corona uh, containment the, the Holy Trinity and Applet And not and not much more. Uh, the, that and the basic uh, loading, loading of of QML stuff, also living there. And and data engines, uh, data engines die. All the script engine stuff die. 
uh, other things uh, like the uh, context uh, the context menu plugins uh, those can also probably live elsewhere just just in uh, the final plasma shell implementation probably uh, so the life cycle will would not change significantly um, Uh, the part that Corona uh, parses up letter C and then creates the containments and then creates the applets uh, and then containment create the applets from the config file that would not change uh, the way on how containments are assigned to screens that needs a bit more discussion so I'm not sure yet um, uh, what uh, what will change is that the view um, when it uh, it gets a containment uh, it will ensure that the QML part of the containment is instantiated um, and and then it will it will display it as the as the main thing of the view. Uh, the containment uh, will then instantiate the QML part of any applet, uh, not not directly, not directly, and not from the C++ part, but from the QML part. Uh, so, only each applet pointer uh, arriving, even just created or or just created because it was it was. Uh, uh, restored for the configuration um, it creates an instance of applet container which uh, which points to an applet and then applet container would create uh, the QML part uh, there will not be any more applet interface but will still have plasmoid in some form but uh, should be better that plasmoid is just a pointer to applet directly um, so on the on the applet side so on the plasmoid developer side uh, the structure the same uh, all the QML files in a K package I think that I would like is uh, to force the root objects um, of the QML scene to be a particular class, like usually in Qt Quick Controls and Kirigami applications, you have to have an application window. Um, and uh, I would like to have uh, uh, to, to have plasmoids need to be an instance of plasmoid representation, which in my prototype at the moment is a Q object. Uh, that just provides two properties, representation and full representation, which are QQML components that get created only on demand. Uh, uh, the plasmoid object that becomes the applet, uh, I would probably prefer it to be an attached property instead of a context property, which are kind of evil. Um, uh, this is an uh, uh, example code, uh, already kind of functional. Uh, so you have as root applet representation, and then uh, you can uh, uh, specify a compact representation as it's today, this com compact and full representations. They already, uh, they already exist. And as is today, compact representation, 99.9% .9 of the times, you don't need that. Uh, it will just be by default uh, that icon that is defined in the shell package. Or you could uh, set it explicitly as null null to say that you don't want it. Your uh, your plasmoid, it's always, it's always um, expanded like the taskbar that you don't want to. Uh, to do that in a pop-up. Uh, the full representation, 
at the moment in Plasma 5 is optional. Uh, in Plasma 6 would be um, uh, in Plasma 6 would be mandatory as the root element is not a is not a <coughs> is not an arbitrary item anymore. And then from anywhere you could uh, you could access plasmoid in this way. Uh, plasma core plasmoid in any place of the QML code from any file that you call it, it will always return the same applet pointer. Uh, as I said, I would like to have uh, uh, shell packages slightly more powerful. I did not do experiments on that yet, uh, but uh, at the moment, the way they uh, personalize like the panel window or the conversion dialog or the desktop, they define the root element of those windows. What I would like to change is them to be able to define uh, uh, the window itself. So um, the shell package would contain a panel.qml like now, but instead of having an item as a root, would have the panel view itself. Uh, so on different, on different shells, uh, you could have much more customized types of views that you may need in uh, uh, more embedded situations, maybe maybe you want panels to not even be a view, but but be in the same view of the desktop or stuff like that. It as as a wild idea, uh, this kind of stuff, so uh, pluggable view types, could also help if at some point we decide to integrate more with LatteDoc. So. Uh, Latedoc is its own shell because in, it needs uh, uh, its own panel view with uh, uh, with very custom features. Uh, so they could do that, and we could even even load everything in the same Plasma process uh, and having their own custom view uh, just loaded as our panel. Uh, but still, 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 just a wild idea. Uh, if uh, anything of everything of that will be actually done, uh, for now our, uh, it's just a very early prototype and also mostly my ramblings. So um, last, the, 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 the paramount objective of course is to, uh, to have the least possible uh, disruption and regressions for the user, uh, but we need to talk more about it, and we will have a, a very long buff on Wednesday on all things plasma. So, if you would like to discuss about that, uh, just come there or find us in the usual channels. And uh, thank you very much. I don't know if there is any time for questions or not, uh, but uh, please do. Yeah, thanks, Marco. Um, there's two minutes left, so maybe one is a quick question. Okay. Um, by Nate, what do you envision for our long-term theming story? So he's eager about the uh, SVG-based theming. That's okay, a, from our long-term theming, I do, I do think uh, the teams exactly as now uh, need to be supported pretty much from the time uh, for the time being uh, because uh, we have a lot of third party um, teams from the store so that that should that should stay supported uh, whether is the main thing uh, probably in the early plasma six days it will be uh, what what I would ask Santa about a, a, a teaming engine would be something a bit more probably CSS based, which can be used by Plasma Shell, can be used by applications, both key widgets and, and QML applications. Uh, maybe also still making use, uh, optional use of Plasma SVG, uh, SVGs as one of the, may, of the many uh, possibilities that, that 
uh, CSS API would would give, uh, but uh, but in the end, some something something more unified. Even if in the end the user could still choose, I want my panels to look completely different. Uh, okay. Yeah. But yeah, that that, that would be a lot of work and and yeah. still <laughs> needs to be well thought about. Okay, I guess uh, all other questions can be uh, talked about in the BOF meeting. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you very much, everyone. Yeah, thanks, Marco. Thanks.